So we're going to do a segment that not many people cover and talk about. It's the most underrated and underappreciated artist within music, specifically hip-hop and R&B rap, um, to watch out for the next year. Watch out for 2017 and and beyond. Mm-hmm. First artist I'm going to mention, we have featured them many times. We I did one of my first interviews with them. They are called Goodbye Tomorrow. Goodbye Tomorrow are... Uh, well, we don't know exactly who they are. We know a little bit, but we don't know much. They <laughs> are kind of there. kind of secret. They don't reveal exactly who they are, their faces, but their music speaks for itself. Mm. One of the most popular highlight tracks is Jay-Z. And that's is from an album called A Journey Through the Mind of a Non-Believer. Then they released Tunnel Stripe Exit, uh, EP. Their production is their standout and their ability to flow so effortlessly and intelligently through it. They don't. If you're a fan of maybe like a, a Kanye West, if you're a fan of, uh, say, I'm looking at Rolling Stone. If you're a fan of Childish Gambino and Drake, the Childish Gambino that rapped, maybe. Um, I don't even really feel that much, but uh, definitely check them out. They have a lot of talent, and they have a lot of potential to create something unique and special. Black Party. Black Party. They released an album called Mango uh, off SoundCloud. Mm-hmm. Um, really nice sound to it. Reminded me a bit of Frank Ocean. Uh, not much else to say on it. I just really like their sound. Um, you could say it's maybe another copycat kind of music from these other artists trying to make similar sounds to like this kind of new style of music, but I actually like it. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, it's some good music to look out for. Um, this artist is fairly well known, but the reason I'm bringing this specific track up is because it got left off the project because of copyright issues, and it was the perfect time for this artist to get more shine. I'm talking about A Chance to Rapper track with Mick Jenkins and Alex Wiley. Mm. Uh, it was called Grown Ass Kid, and it was a beautiful track. In my opinion, the best track that was on this album, if it was even on, if it even got on this album, and I was really sort of annoyed that that happened because he released it like a, a, a few days before the album was out purely because he knew that he just didn't he just didn't get there in time I really wish I think it was after was it? I think it was after because they, they didn't have the the, the, the clearance to, to put it on the album in time I may be wrong no, no, either way I was just really sad this wasn't on there because there'd be a lot of people that just wouldn't hear this and like yeah. a, f- a week later Alex Wiley released his, his single for his for his mixtape and I feel like they would have got a lot more attention and it was probably my top 5 tracks of the year this track specifically Red Pill which um, I'll, I'll put in there as well. I feel like Alex Wise Red Pill was amazing, apart from Tangerine Dream, which was definitely one of my favorite uh, like albums of the year as well. So, yeah. Alex yeah. Wiley, Mick Jenkins right there. Mick Jenkins was number two. Mm-hmm. Um, honorable mention for you. Yep. He's still underappreciated. Still. He's still look out for 2017. He's not mainstream. And THC got a lot of slack from a lot of people as well. A lot of slack. Yeah, like a lot of people gave it shit. Um, which I, I, can, I can see why some people wouldn't dig that. Uh, but I, I, I was like, nah, man. I, I ain't got much to say about those people. But sure. uh, Kev Decor, a, a man, Kev Decor. Um, what I do appreciate about people like Kev is that they're interactive through their social media and music. Yep. And I hope he continues to be the same, or he tries to. Talking about music, this man is a hustler. I respect the motherfucking hustle. Every week. He releases a new track on SoundCloud. He's busy as shit. You can see it. He's making these new kind of music mm-hmm. vlogs. Really cool. And he's releasing and he's always experimenting, trying these new sounds. I don't think a lot of people sound like him. No people have his no. voice. He has he, this different voice. And the way he uses autotune is very different as well from other artists too. Yeah. And I feel like he's got such a, such a beautiful soul about him. And if you want to check out some of his stuff, I think good tracks to start are like No Life. Uh, sorry, For Life, No Eyes. No Those, Eyes. No That's eyes. one of my favorite tracks of no the year. No Eyes is such a good track. And yeah. You can also check out his uh, his previous work beforehand. Like He's just a really dope artist. Check right out No right Eyes. There. Definitely. Definitely. No Eyes. That's the one to check out. I uh, I also got some ish right here. Uh, and also found this year that had some good tracks out there. Ladonis. I really hope he picks up a lot. One track in particular, Brown Skin. Ladonis. Oh, was it Brown Skin Girl? Ladonis. Yeah, Brown Skin. Ladonis? Yo, yo, you check out some of his called Brown Skin. It is such a fun, sexy song, a killer beat. He's got a, such a, a braggadocious swagness to him. Ooh. And I, I really, I really fucking love this track. I thought it deserves a mention because not other, not many other people are talking about it. See? So we'll be chucking this down. You gotta check this shit out. Saba. He released the album Bucket This Project, mm-hmm. another Chicago native, incredible talent out of Chicago. Great sound to his album. Not a lot of people don't know him. Um, 
But a lot of Chicago natives like Mick Jenkins like him, and I think he's a great artist. Well, yeah. In Chicago, he'd be massive, but because there are so many Chicago people blowing up, he's yeah. just not getting the shot. We ain't Chicago. Everywhere. We ain't the shy. We, we ain't there. <laughs> Man, we also got a guy called, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Tanji Ige, or IGE. How would you pronounce that? What is that? I don't know. Tanji, he released a mixtape this year. I really liked it. There's a track called um, uh, Day to Day. There's a really good remix that too. Remix by... Oh God, that's small as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Mixed by Ali. That's who did that shit. But um, yeah, I feel like the, he put out a pretty solid mixtape. He had some good good content. His beat section was really dope. And uh, yeah, go check him out. Definitely someone who I think could get... You'll hear his name a bit more in the years to come. Netty. Netty. Australian... I was about to say brother from another mother. She ain't a brother. She a sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Netty is one of my... Uh, call her an MC? I don't know the definition of an MC. Excuse me if I'm using it incorrectly, but she's one of my favorite MCs mm. at this time. You know, we're going to put aside the Missy Elliott's and the, and, the, and, the, and the Eves, right? I'm talking right now. Um, <laughs> her aggressiveness, her braggadociousness, um... Her creativity with her rhymes, she's having a lot of fun with this hip hop and rap, mm. and I respect her music, and I think you should check her out. She's from Melbourne, Australia. She's an Australian native. Look her up on SoundCloud and E T T I. Fuck with her. Mm. Uh, Green Slime did an amazing track with Mick Jenkins called oh, yeah. Zoo. Yo, you told you show me this shit. This Zoo. bangs motherfucking hard. So oh. fucking hard. Oh. Woo. Man, I thought that deserved a mention because it is just such a great track. Now, we did a first reaction to Martin Sky. Those who don't know Martin Sky, if you like banging beats mm -hmm. and, 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 well, production standout, this man's moving away from hip hop and rap and just doing production. Look out for the production features mm. on some upcoming albums from, from some relatively big artists in 2017 this man's gonna have his hand on some for the next couple years and the future and watch out it's so great also looking at how more how much happy he is now he even he even posted yeah. a few days ago about like i want 2017 to be about pursuing happiness for you so it feels it. like he's found that go get it for this moment and it's absolutely beautiful to see awful dodger awful dodger oh, how the fuck did this i can see why i didn't make the album because of the message in the album but this track was motherfucking hard and when the beat switches up with his last verse oof, oof, oof. it doesn't pick Mercy up at a Oh, no, no, this album, I added this in there. I'm sorry. I put this album as a bonus track you on there. You put it on I put THC. It on so every time I listen, every time I listen to THC now, this track plays there. That's dope. Do that. I had, man. I had. Well, I did that. I did that with a grown ass kid. I put that in the chance. I'm not even gonna play that shit no more. But I put it in there. Uh, and even with certain albums, I'll take out tracks because if I'm gonna replay ability. It's your world. It's we're my just, world, man. We're just living in it. Yo. Also on the track of Mick Jenkins, uh, CGB with Test Me. That was a really good tune as well. I think you you showed me that one as well. So this is Mick Jenkins. Just this is the Mick Jenkins show right now. He's he's giving other artists some love and also still doing his thing. Fuck with him. And he's also fucking with really heavy beats that he hasn't been doing so much in, instead of just this year. Fuck with him. Fuck with him. Uh, Ali Belmont. Ali you mentioned Belmont. Belmont. Emerald Intercontinental Champion. And Emerald's ninety six. One of the tracks of the year. Just look up the track. Emerald's ninety six. It's a mother Ali Belmont fucking anthem. Hundred percent. It's from Australia, Kena Melbourne, Forest. Australia. Kilo Forest represent Ali Belmont, doing a hell of a job, yeah, creating yeah. some dope ass music, and representing what Australian hip hop, the side of hip hip Australian hip hop that I like, because it's hard to get me to like some Australian yeah, hip hop. I, I feel bad because I haven't been covering much Australian hip hop, but this is this is what I enjoy. If you if you were talked to me when I was doing a bit more radio ish about three four years ago, I would have been 50 60 percent hip hop Australian hip hop because I was just more invested into it. Yeah. I was interviewing a lot more people, mm. and it was really sad at the time because I feel like a lot of me forced myself to like the music because I was interviewing them. But then I got to the stage, not that they're bad, it just wasn't me. I got to the stage where I was interviewing a lot of Australian artists and, and listened to so much of it. I was just like, man, like all I want to do is be listen to this American stuff because I enjoy it more. But I really want to just invest time in this and try and get to like it more so when I interview them I feel like I like it more and then I got to the stage of the mentality of like 
don't force yourself to do that shit. If you don't like it as much as this, don't listen to it as much. You can still support it and know they're a dope artist, but just don't force yourself for that shit. And then that's where it all just changed. Lance Skywalker slash Skywalker. I'm a bit confused. Just watch out for him. I don't know what he's going to be doing. His last project, Interved Intuition, I really had like it. very mixed reactions. Very mixed. Might be your worst album of the year. Or might be one of your favorites or just middle ground. Who's in my thirty? Just watch out for him. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. You have my attention. That's it. Yo, a really fun track that uh, did uh, did blow up a little bit, which was great promotion for his album Genesis Domo Genesis, the song Dapper with Anderson Park. Uh, really fun video. The Odd Future crew's there. They're all just like having fun. And uh, Domo spit some really low key verses on it. And I just feel like when you get Anderson Park on a feature, he just blesses so it. So look out for Domo. Domo is established, isn't look he? Look up. He's not established at He's all. He's not. Man. He got, a, Genesis. He, well, he got a lot of love from Odd Future, but like people that released albums like Domo and Hodgie, Hodgie and Hodgie Beats and like right. Left Side, Mike G, like they're not, they're not big, not big at all. They're just known to be in OF. Some yeah. people call this man the next coming of Gold Link, and this is I'm gonna do two in one. Not a lot of Gold Link's not mainstream. I mean it. Amine Caroline Coming out with his uh, da, na, 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 Huge na. track Blowing fucking pff, Record numbers I did not expect this track To do what it did Bad all. bitch Caroline Woo oh, Anyway I ain't him uh, But Amine Could be the next sound of Gold Link He's got a very similar sound yeah, Kind of yeah, direction yeah, yeah, yeah. Both of them are good Really good talents mm -hmm. Especially Gold Link um, I look forward to whatever his album, his next album, Calling Brio. I like. What's he gonna do next? He mm. has a lot of new fans now, and Goldlink is the same. He's much more established, but still relatively unknown, and uh, but a great potential. Boom! I also forgot about this track that I was mentioning. A, a guy called Owen Bones released an amazing track, which was called Stuntman, which had Kevin Abstract and Mick Jenkins on. <laughs> Course. Another an amazing feature. I, I I was covering all these tracks, and most of the tracks I loved this year had him featured on it. And and Owen Bones and Kevin Abstract did their fucking thing on this as well. And Kevin Abstract released an album this year too, or mixtape I think, that was so different that a lot of people found it hard to like. But he he did his thing. Uh, also gonna say Kyle Bentz, uh, a track called The Higher Power. This track got big purely off Reddit, and he released a video off a phone that his homie took of him just walking around the school with all people at his school. The power of the internet, man. Yeah. And I feel like that he's released a bit of material since then, which, you know, it's still all right, but not up to this standard, but he's got a bit of a fan base now purely because of that video and the power of Reddit. So Kyle Bent really does mention on there. Kyle Bent. Yeah, yeah. Gallant, or Gallant, however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. um, his most famous track, Wade in Gold, has a really great sound to it, and short and sharp. He only has an EP out. Haven't heard that, but uh, I look forward to whatever he creates next. He has some great features, mm -hmm. and um, he has a great, beautiful voice and sound. Uh, a rapper called Coach Tev released a great track this year called Lefty. It's so swag. Fuck, man, it's just hard. It's a hard track, and he does his thing on there. Just the way he lin lingers his voice and just delivers the bars. Check that shit out. Also, a track by a guy called Choosy, which remixes two classic beats. Uh, a Tribe Called Quest Electric Relaxation which has been used a lot but he mixes it with Lupe Fiasco's Gold Watch from The Cool mm. Album blends those two together with his own instrumentation on top of that and it blows me away every time I listen to that track really fucking solid like I called Choosy check that shit out Ishtar Woo! he was honourable mentions for the albums mm. Broken Heart and Bankrolls he oh. is a, a Milwaukee native great tracks on the album man. and just a really solid album and a really solid artist uh, I would recommend to check him out if you like a more high tempo mm -hmm. Lyrically strong tracks like Time Music. Shorty Gone, tracks like Alpha that didn't make the album, I think. Yeah, with the beat switch up, he had a lot of fucking amazing content on it and a great introduction to him. The show also a guy that released a pretty good mixtape, Azizi Gibson. He uh, has a lot of hard hitting material, he has a pretty, pretty aggressive flow. One of the best tracks in the album, I thought, was DJ Khaled. Did you ever hear that track? Mm. Motherfucker, put that shit on right now. <laughs> Last two for me, uh, Toronto Native, he was in an honorable, actually he's in my top 10 albums with Hotel Paranoia, his name's Jazz Cartier, yeah, he's yeah. an incredible talent and you should fuck with him, but for, him, for making top 10 albums you should at least give him a listen, exactly. uh, just type in opera, I'm just ready to be blown away, 
and then Isaiah Rashad, Sons Tyree, your favorite album of the year. But motherfuckers don't know him, man. Motherfuckers don't know him. You sleeping on Rashad on one of TDE's best talents. I personally think that he's next up to Kendrick Lamar. My, my list goes, I, I got it. Kendrick Lamar, Isaiah Rashad. Hold on, no song? Oh, but you did great. Okay. Absol. Yep. Schoolboy Q. Yep. J Rock. Yep. SZA. Yep. Punch. But that was my. Uh, I'm gonna miss a couple people. Apologies. Yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. dope and I missed you. There's a lot of you. But that's watch yeah. out for 2017 for me. I'm just gonna smash through these last ones quickly. Yoshi Tompkins. We found him. He was dope. Very similar style to Denzel Curry's track Black Jesus and Gucci Mane. Woo! Hard shit. Uh, Derek Pope. Derek Pope's an up and comer. I think he's got a lot of talent. Check out his track called Everything, which is dope. Uh, Smoke DZA. He released mm. two albums. I mean, he seven albums here. One he did with Pete Rock exclusively. The other one had a track on there with Ace of Rocky called Nine, which I believe was beautiful. Really good. Uh, Afro, long time coming. Very lyrical artist. Has a massive boom back sound. Very old school sound. Doesn't like blend with the new. He just strictly keeps it that way. And if you're, if you're into that shit and you don't like the new shit, then you'll love Afro. Check him out. Uh, Unicorn Bounty Hunters. Yes, you heard that right. That is her name. Unicorn Bounty Hunters. <laughs> they did a track called Sun Gazing, and uh, it was so fun. It was. It has probably one of my favorite hooks of the year. It, the hook is so infectious. I fucking love that track. Just go check it out. Uh, a guy called Swavy. Track called Loyal. Produced. Raps. See, he does everything on that motherfucking track, and it's dope as fuck. Uh, and this guy, I believe, is going to blow up and get into the uh, freshman next year. Rich Chigger. Bro, Rich Chigger. Bro, bro. He, he became his first a meme. Motherfuckers making fun of him. Yeah, a meme. He was microwave and bread. But he, yo, he got some like there's something there. That's there's sick. something there. Who would that be? And who would he have 17. a feature with? He had a feature with motherfucking Ghostface Killer. Ghostface and Killer. And he got Puya on there as well, who's blowing up too. This man's sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, man, he's seventeen. Get the fuck out of here, Rich I, Chigger. I don't Ooh. think he has the wordplay right now, but he's got the he's got the look and he's got the style and the potential. Mm. He's mm. he's counter what everybody would think hip hop. Yeah. And I know that race shouldn't be a thing, but in hip hop there isn't that many massive artists that are of that of Asian descent. And I feel like that needs that there. It needs that diversity. And I feel like he could bring it, and then more people would look up to him, and they'd want to do that shit as well. Because I feel like the, even though race shouldn't really be an issue, people look up to. People are like, oh man, he's but he's not who like the where I come from. So I don't know if I can do that shit. People think like that, man. It's fucked. People do. I know, man. That's the world we live yeah. in. But you know, we gotta focus on the positive. You know, positive. I'm I'm not I'm gonna look at you like that. Well, but I'm gonna consider it in the conversation because it makes you, makes you who you are. Mm. But Rich Chigger. Rich Chigger, man. You you have my curiosity. Exactly, like I think he could flop. I will watch out for you. He could flop terribly, but I, I feel like he's definitely needing hip hop. We got our Reggie Bonds with a proceed with love. Fuck hate with Superboy on there. Superboy is doing his thing too. He was on the track with Chance the Rapper, which is dope. So those two rappers, I believe, need to mention Hannibal King, the man who doesn't wear anything but flower shirts. Uh, produces a lot of his own stuff as well. Track called World Go Round. Put out a pretty dope mixtape. Check him out. Uh, Emilio Rojas. I hate Donald Trump. One of the, to me, one of the best. Donald Pro like Donald Trump tracks that came out this year. Okay. I showed it to you. He really goes in depth about uh who he was before as a man and the way that he views um uh what's the word I'm looking for? Customs? Like when people are trying to break into from you know there's a word for it. I can't remember, but he goes into that shit. Uh and last but not least, because we want to mention this man, Duckworth, I want this motherfucker to blow up. Oh yeah. There you go. This, I feel like this man, out of everyone that I've mentioned, in that is in under underrated and underappreciated, he has it to be a big artist. He's got the personality, his videos, he's got the art form with budgets, he's got he's got the flow character music. he's got everything that's needed to be a big a big artist. And I think that he I really hope he gets that's there. A great point. He has the kind of the formula. Yeah. Or the potential. He's the got potential. everything. Everything that you can mention I believe he's got it. So those are our underrated, underappreciated watch out for twenty seventeen artists within hip hop and without Jungle Beats Radio. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Be jazz. So I want to say thank you for watching. Is that something I want to say? Well, they might not even be watching that. No, not many then, people make then, it to the end, though. But then the people watching this thing would be like, maybe you should say the beginning. Thank you for watching at the beginning? Yeah. But if they're watching it only from the beginning, are they really watching? 
I don't know. What is a watch? Maybe you should maybe you should just say thank you for watching the beginning, but staring at them so hard that they just feel like they're obligated to watch the whole thing or else that you're gonna come murder them or some shit. I think that's when they click the X. Oh shit.